Welcome back everyone. The topic for today's video is going to be how to set up your Thinkorswim platform so that you can effectively and efficiently trade option plays that you find on unusual whales. And of course, this also applies to any other option plays that you may have as this is a very effective setup. So immediately, let's take a look at the screen and what we see here is the chart and on the sidebar, I wanna draw your attention over here. You can see that I populate ticker symbols for plays that I call out. What we're gonna be using today as our example is Square, which I called out on my Twitter page and it ran for 78% today. The basis for this trade was data that we found on unusual whales. I'm gonna post that up here as well so that you can take a quick look at it. But of course, you can always find that on my Twitter page. So step one for me is populating these trades in my watch list. That way I can click on them and move to them very easily. And one thing I wanna clear up with everybody is how do you get this to populate on the chart really quickly? Well, what you see in your watch list, you see that there's a little number up here, this number one, is you wanna link it. You can link this to different areas within Thinkorswim. So I set it to red, and then I also set this to red. That means whatever I select over here will also populate here, because they're interlinked. Red is linked to red. And of course, you could do this for a lot of other colors as well, so you can have lists for up to nine different colors here, and you can have different links. So I do that, so I just have a quick look. So if I was trying to take a look at Sava instead, I should click on Sava, and because this is red, populates here. If I was trying to click on PayPal, I could do that as well. So let's go back to Square. All right, so we're gonna zoom in here. Now, it's not enough that you simply populate the tickers because you wanna be able to trade quickly, and if you're trading options, then you're not trading based off the ticker. So what do we do? Well, I wanna say this first and foremost. I think that having multiple monitors is extremely helpful for trading. I think two is almost the minimum, at least for me, I like to have two at any given point in time, but I realize that not everybody has multiple monitors. So here's what you could do. If you do have multiple monitors, you can set some of these things up on different screens and I will touch on that. But if you don't, I'm making this user friendly so that those of you who are working off of one monitor will understand how to operate and how to get set up. So Let's work under the pretense that you only have one monitor here. What I do is we click on square, right? And then you want to go to trade. And in this case, we're looking for the 160 puts, right? So how do I get the 160 puts? We so see my list over here. How do I link them over? You can send it if you'd like, uh, sorry, send it to a color code. But what I find to be the most simple is I click copy, because remember, I'm doing this the night before when I make my callouts. I'm preparing in advance because you don't want to be doing any of this sort of thing during the day, scrambling while you're trying to get into a trade. Always prepare in advance. It saves you time and it reduces the likelihood of errors because I'm going to tell you now, I know of people who have written me saying that they were in the moment trying to pull up the contract and they accidentally grabbed the calls instead of the puts and vice versa, or they clicked on the wrong contract. And that can be very problematic. And sometimes what you'll see on Thinkorswim or other platforms is this will be minimized and will be on a different date. So you'll think that you have everything right, but because you're in a rush, you won't check as much. So let's get back to it. What do I do? I right click and I hit copy. And then what I do is I go over here and control V. That's how you paste, hit enter. I now have the square contracts queued up and ready to go, but let's take a look. So how do I move in to trade them really quickly? Well. Immediately, what I want to do is we still have square up here. We're not looking at the contracts yet. I want to go to Active Trader. So you click on Active Trader. How do you get to Active Trader? Well, if you don't see this option, this bar on the side, let's cover that as well. What you want to do is go to your customized grid and show the sidebar. See this sidebar over here? When I click here, it disappears. If you don't see it, you click there, it appears, right? And so then, of course, I don't want to be staring at this. It's just going to distract me. So go here. And I click on customize grid again. So let's assume that you've done that. You go to Active Trader, you're set up. Now, in Active Trader, I just want to go over a few things because, again, not everybody's setup is going to look the same, and I want to teach you how to get to this exact place. So you may see something that looks like this. I suggest expanding. And I do that because it's very important. You need to be able to input your quantity, right? I also like the idea of being able to see my PL. What does that mean? My profits and losses to know where I am and it might help you with your stops. So you can customize and you can add your PL from open and just hit add item. 
and that'll send it in. Then let's go right back here. Something else that's absolutely critical before we take the next step, critical to know and understand, auto send button. I click on the auto send button. What's the difference? Well, I can click anywhere here now. This is how we place orders. You just click to transmit your order. If auto send is enabled, it's instant. And when you're trading options and you want to be quick, at least on my end, I certainly don't want a prompt or a little pop-up window saying, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I've been trading. I became a professionally licensed trader in 2005. I am definitely sure of what I'm doing and I want to have my trades transmitted immediately. Most people, when you're ready to click, you should have conviction and, and be prepared to transmit your order. Click on auto send. Once you click, it transmits right away. Otherwise, you're going to have a pop-up box and you're going to have to click on the pop-up box. You might have missed your price. You might be chasing, particularly in a fast moving environment as options always are. So that's how you're going to use Active Trader. Remember, if you don't see this, click the drop down, arm it. You're going to be able to enter your quantity. But what we're looking at here is still square stock. So how do we get the options contract up? Well, it's simple. We paste it over here. We pasted the options contract code. So here you go. And this is what it looks like for the options contract, right? You see it moving around. There's gaps. It's very different because it's different volume. Now look at this. You're ready to go. And remember that Thinkorswim will often default your quantity down. So double check it. You want to make sure that you're getting the quantity that you want. And there's some quick hotkeys here. You can switch over to 5, 10, just by clicking here. It'll populate the number for you, or you can populate it yourself. So that's what I do on my setup. Now, let's look at a few other very important items that really help with your trading day, and then we'll circle back on some smaller points. Let's go back to Square. So 162.20, let's see where that is. 162.20 was my trigger limit. You'll see that on my Twitter page. If you want to follow my callouts, go to my Twitter page. It's at Profits Taken. You'll see it here in the bottom right of the screen. I provide daily callouts and use unusual whales as a critical data point in those callouts. But let's say we're at 162.20. I set this up the night before. Again, you don't want to be scrambling. And I'm going to show you what I set up. I right click and then go to Add Drawing and I set a price line, right? So we're going to go 162. 20. And don't worry, you don't have to click around perfectly because then you can always right click and edit, which I like to do anyways. You can just input that right here. So you can name your price level if you'd like, right? And I like to put right extension on. So what does that mean? See that price over there? Shows me the price. And this is just a good visual cue, right? I know what my price entry point is, but it's nice to see as a visual cue because the price is moving quickly. And again, it's all perspective. So you get set up the night before right? Or before the market start opens, excuse me, get set up before the market opens at the very least. I like to set up the night before. And then if there's any revisions and adjustments, I make them before market open. You're going to set this price line in place. Now, what else do I do? Since this is going to the short side, we're looking at puts and this is just me. It's a personal thing. I like to change the color down here and I set it to red. You can set it to pink if you like, whatever color you like, as long as it signals to you that it's puts. Just again, it's perspective. It's not as though you're going to switch contracts. We already have your contacts, your contracts, sorry, queued up. You're not going to be switching them out, but then let's take a look over here. So we have that all set up. We're at 162.20. We have our price line set up. We have the option ready to go. So I'm watching here and anytime I want, look over here at the active trader, I can click, move over and prepare to execute a trade. And I may already have my contracts queued up. And again, this is for one screen. You can split this out into multiple screens if you have that luxury in that space. One tip I'll give everybody is make sure that this is wide enough. The red and green zones. Why? Because this is where you're going to click to transmit your order. And if it's tiny, as it often is, and on some mo monitors it's even smaller, you can easily miss, right? Particularly if you're a little bit anxious and you're clicking quickly. These are just the small tips that you don't want to get caught up with. All right. So let's go back here. We're looking at square with the chart. We have 162.20 set. Here's something else that I do that can be very helpful because when you're monitoring multiple stocks, as I do, I have grids and I have multiple different pages on different monitors where I'm monitoring different securities visually. You can get caught up or distracted or be looking at something else and not realize the price is moving down, particularly if you're on one monitor. Even if you're on multiple, you may just not be looking at the other ones. How do you know something's approaching? Here's what I do. I know that we wanted a retest here, right? 
Why is that? Because we open under the trigger. So that means I'm waiting for it to break up and then come back down through the trigger as you see it did and we got quite a gain here. So what am I going to do? If this is where we're at right now, I know that we've broken up already. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set an alert, but I'm going to set it not too far away from my trigger point. One thing that I see a lot of people have done is they set their trigger, their alert triggers around here or at the alert. Well, I don't want to be alerted once we're at 160, 162.20 because then we're already at the price. I'm going to miss it or I'm going to be scrambling and panicked and trying to get in and that's where errors happen. Don't create your alert here. The whole idea is to alert you so that you can prepare to enter. I set my alert maybe somewhere like here. And it's different on each stock, you know, you have to be relative to the price, right? So if we're trading a 31 cent stock, I wouldn't go, what, 60 cents away because that doesn't make any sense. So what I do is I right click and I select create alert on the stock at or below. And then you could choose your sound chime. You know, you can play the sound to hear it. See what if you find one annoying and one more alerting, you could do that but at or below, right? Because I'm waiting for this to break down. I wanna see it at or below. If I put at or above and we're here, it's just gonna go off right away because we're already above. So then I hit create. And you're gonna see it's over here now because we've moved on in the day and we're a little bit later on, but this is the area that I'm isolating. So we make a move up and this is what happens. We start moving down, moving down. Maybe I'm looking at a different security. We're moving down, we're moving down right here. I'm gonna get an alert. And I'm going to have a couple minutes, which is more than enough to prepare for this trade, because now I'm going to start watching it. You know, the first point at which we broke through here on the way down, let's take a look, it was right here, actually right here in this candle. So I get another minute two. now we're breaking down. Maybe I enter here or here. I have a lot of entry points. It wouldn't be stopped out. This isn't enough to stop you out. Could have entered anywhere here. And then you get a nice big run down but I was alerted, so that way, once I see that alert, I can start watching, I can queue up my contracts, I can enter the trade, right? So let's zoom out, and this is what it looks like, okay? I'm going to disable this now. So again, you wanna have everything queued up, get your contracts queued up, create your price line, have your alert set a little bit away from your entry point. And another great example is here. Let's say you missed the first entry or the second. You see this breaking up and you say, you know what? I want to know when it comes back down here. It could be a while, right? And you're not expected to stare at a screen the entire time. So I set an alert and I say, at or below, right there, right? So this entire time, you don't have to be gluing your eyes to the monitor. What's going to happen is it's going to make a move up, consolidate, come back down a little bit, make a big move up again. You're going to hear about it here. You probably have to be a little bit quicker at this point. But again, the whole point is just to alert you, to draw your attention so that you can prepare to enter and then bang, once you're ready to enter, you're clicking over, go on your options contract and you can perform your execution here. Particularly if you have auto send, it'll move quicker. Be conscious right here. And then of course, if you're looking for things like triggers with brackets and one cancels the other, that sort of thing, you could set everything up in here. I do think that it is wise to have a stop loss. Um, it having it placed automatically for you prevents you from errors prevents you from maybe panicking or feeling the nerves in the moment and in the situation but this is how i recommend setting up for your trades with unusual whales of course when you're using unusual whales one more thing that you can do that i've covered in my scalping video is you can have another screen set up where you're looking at the options flow one note is don't let it rattle you and make sure that you're used to doing this because if you just see options coming in, you might think, oh, there's one for 10,000, there's one for 5,000, it's bullish, it's bearish. It might cause you to enter or exit a position prematurely or too late. So if you're not completely comfortable with doing it otherwise, don't worry about that for now. If you are looking at signing up with Unusual Whales, you're interested, I think it's a great platform. My coupon code for Unusual Whales is profits taken, and that's in the description. So if you are thinking about signing up or giving it a try or even a lifetime membership, a longer membership, enter that for a 5% off discount. And thanks again, everybody. We will see you in the next video.